My name is Christabel Dadzi. Um, what I do, I work for the World Bank as a social protection specialist um, here in Accra. I cover Ghana, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. Um, and then when I'm not at the World Bank, amongst the other things, I founded an organization called Ahaspra Young Professionals. Um, it's a group of young Ghanaians who have returned home from abroad, um, having lived or worked abroad to make a difference. And basically we do two things. We support each other in the uh, returnee process and then we also give back to our community. So I'm actually blessed to enjoy both of the lives, the major lives, I have a lot of the things going on, but that I do um, as a social protection specialist in the World Bank. Basically what I do is I work with the most vulnerable. I am part of a team that supervises the loans that are given to the government of Ghana and Liberia or Sierra Leone on social protection, essentially cash transfers to the poor. Um, things like free school uniform, um, school feeding programs, national health insurance, you know, those of us who are able, you know, to afford economically, you don't think about some of these things. So you, for, let's just give an example. Let's say there was an earthquake. You know, you may lose your house, but you have something stashed away in the bank. So you're able to bounce back um, more quickly than the most vulnerable. So the idea of social protection is to help people be resilient from shocks. And also with time, you introduce them to economic activity so that they can leap out of poverty. So that's what I work on. Um, and then the other side, because the bank ties social protection with jobs, um, is youth employment. And so we work on helping governments either design programs of youth employment or frameworks to do with the youth employment activities that they're working on. So that's what I do at the bank, basically. Also within that is policy writing, helping the governments to make policies and so that the help that we're giving is sustainable. Um, then for Ahaspra, I founded the organization, AKA I have to run it. <laughs> but I'm fortunate to have friends who have been with me along the way. Um, essentially what we did, how we started was um, a listserv essentially for anybody and everybody who was on it to ask questions and you'll be surprised. Simple questions like, um, I'm going to Makola to get some fabric because I hear it's great, but I'm at Tema Station and I don't know where else to go. <laughs> and funny enough, one of the many people on the listserv will be able to respond. And then we've had serious things like, I need a job, or housing opportunities, or very particular things like, I want the CSR policy, has anybody seen it? You know, so it's helped people really kind of settle in. Um, we have people on the listserv that have not come back home they're thinking about it, but they stay in and they realize, oh, there's people who think like me or people who are going through struggles like me. You know, so this is something I can do, which was really the idea from the onset. Um, when I first moved back and I started telling my story about the good, the bad, the ugly of being home. And that's when I gathered friends and said, let's do this. And that's how it all started. We also have a happy hour, uh, which is more social once a month to get us all together. Um, it, releases natural networking, people found jobs, people found husbands, you know, the, all nine yards uh, through our networking activities. And then the other piece was for all of us, or I'd say majority of us who've come home and came because we wanted to, there's that element of give back, where we want to be here to do something different for our countries, and that's why we made the move. I came home totally out of my own, through my own volition. It wasn't because anybody asked me to come. It wasn't because I lost my job, which is what happens with a lot of people. I just said in January 2010, I'm going home. In June 2010, I was on my way. Um, and so giving back is a huge part of that. And uh, we discussed what kinds of ways do we want to give back. And mentoring was the one that had, was on the top of the list. Because as um, diasporans, we would learned a new way of life. Getting the exposure globally also helps you to become a you know, better person or worse, but you know, usually a better. And so we decided we would like to impart that um, into people here at home. And so we work with high school students and we've been doing that for the last four years. So I reimagine Africa where we're truly in control of our resources an Africa where we, just, we don't just follow a path that is already imagined for us, which is what I feel we do a lot now. You know, we pick democracy, maybe it's great, maybe it's not, but we pick it with all its systems and does it really fit um, with the timelines? And, and I think democracy, like they say, is the necessary evil, but at the same time, like, what does it mean for the continent? Um, I 
reimagine an Africa where we make decisions for ourselves. Um, and I say this in context because I work for the World Bank naturally. So it's not, I'm not saying they shouldn't be donors, but I want to see Africa right at the center of the globe the way it should be, making decisions that make sense to it. And I've worked closely with government now for the last three years. So I've, I have a new appreciation for what happens there for better or worse. Um, but I also see some you know, um, high level people who go to the table and they're begging. And that's not the Africa I want to see. I want the Africa where you, you, you stand for yourself because first of all, you know you have the resources, you know you have the human resources, which I think is key. Um, and you also know what you want and you're passionate about making a difference and you have a vision. So, and I think that encompasses for me all the things I'm passionate about because one of my huge passion is, passions is education. You know, and I believe that without education, we're kidding ourselves. You know, when you're educated, you know to take the malaria pills. You know, when you're educated, you know to, you'll be better off at getting a job. You know, all of that. So in the, for me personally, it starts with education. But it's that grandiose idea of an Africa where the African is standing in the middle of it and it's the world stage and we have a voice and rightfully so. And this was the year when I said no resolutions this year. <laughs> Let's work on the last ones. But um, so bringing it back to, the, to, to reality, really, that's why I do what I do with the Hasbro, for example. We can't have the Africa I'm talking about if we don't come back home and fix it. You know, we're not, you know, so here's a very good example. Just last week, um, a group of friends and I, together with the Hasbro, we opened out a donation spree for Sierra Leone after the mudslide. And for me, it was, without a doubt, it had to happen. Why? Because... I'm not gonna wait for the West to come and give us aid and then expect that I should be at the table driving. It should come from Africa. You know, ECOA should be right at there responding the day after or even the day off. Um, we should have no borders per se. Right now for travel, if I want to go to some parts of French Africa, I'm better off going to France first and coming back. It's faster doesn't make any sense, right? So, but these problems can be solved by us. And I do believe that based on my own experience, having been exposed to living in multiple countries, I, I come back with a mindset that's a bit different, right? And so that's the Africa that I'm looking for. And so if you ask me very quickly between now, because the year is pretty much done, so I have three months, right? Or the coming year. Okay, so I have one year, 24 months. I will keep doing what we're doing in a Hasbro, for example. There are stuff that we're not doing because we, we have, just haven't had the time, but that's why I applaud you for what you're doing because one of the things, we have an initiative called the Hasbro's of Africa that we're still um, working on rolling out. And it's exactly this, telling the story of the person that moved home um, and is making a difference to encourage other people to do the same. Because if we come and we are sitting in the driving seats, not only of business and entrepreneurship, but of governance, I think that's super key. You know, if we're taking roles in the government, then we're making decisions for our continent. So that's that's my one year. Hold me to it. I'm going to make sure I get a husband of African done. <laughs> so one thing I've advocated for since the beginning of a husband synergies partnerships. So everything we've tried to do when we launched our mentoring program, we worked with an existing program that was entering schools already. So what we did was like, you know, we don't know how to enter the schools, but we know how to be mentors. So we partnered with a group that was already doing career development in schools, and we said, bring us your students and let's mentor them. And that was really the foundation of what we've done, and we keep doing that. Um, two years ago, when there was a huge flood in Ghana and there was devastation across Accra, we partnered with CTFM to give donations. You know, there is a lot of power in working together. You get stuff done. It's I'm not for taking glory, not for a second. I'm for getting the work done. And so what do I want? What help do I need? Partnerships. If you're interested in what we do, and I just realized I never said what AHA SPRA means, so maybe let me do that. AHA in tree is here, and SPRA is a stem of the diaspora. So basically we're here from the diaspora. Um, and we're trying to make a difference in so many ways. There's some amazing, amazing people I've met through this network. And so if you're, last week, a happy hour was with a group called Afro Weekender from the Netherlands. Um, so that's an example right there. We're meeting new people, new Africans looking at things that we're looking at um, differently, right? And then together we can make it. So I'm really saying 
We're open for partnerships. We're open for ha helping hands, true helping hands. Let's get this done. I'm just excited to be here. I'm excited to be a part of the Reimagine Africa Forum, Harvard Africa Forum. I did not go to Harvard University, but I believe in what is being done. And again, as an African, a young African, I'm all for supporting endeavors like this. I think we should have more. Um, being a researcher myself, international development practitioner, I believe in talking about issues and deliberating because that's how we get change done. So it's amazing to meet all the people I'm meeting and I'm hoping that we have more of these forums here on the continent um, to make a difference. <laughs>